We're currently out of the foundry with Mizuno's Chris Voschel with something pretty special in our hands right now. A, a, a brand new product, JPX1, JPX1 Select driver. And these are special because it, it's a whole new material that we're talking about. Right. Before we get into nano alloy, what it is, because both of us want to geek out on this <laughs> and explain what it is. But if you were to try to explain what the process looked like, what the end goal was. Sure. What did you guys try to accomplish with nano alloy in this driver? What would you what would you tell people? Yeah, so the thinking going into this, and this goes back years ago, was how can we change the dynamic that happens when a ball meets a driver? I know that sounds kind of artsy, science sounds kind of out there, but in a world of only a limited number of materials, is there a new material we could introduce that changes that dynamic that introduces a new player playing characteristic for anyone who hits it? And that's where nano alloy came from with the end goal of more ball speed, less energy loss, more distance downrange. We talk about story all the time at Carl's Golf Land, right? What's the story? What do we tell the consumer? What, what's going to compel them to make a purchase? Right. Right. And I think this has such a such a cool story, mm -hmm. how it was developed, how it came about and what it actually does. Because sure. the, the results are there. But to, I guess, get to this point, Mizuno is a multi-sport company. Yep. And this actually came outside of golf, yeah, right? You're exactly right. So we do, we do a lot in the baseball and softball world. And a couple of years ago, we introduced a new material called nano alloy to our baseball bats and our softball bats. And it's a material that lives between the barrel and the handle of our two piece bats. And that material took us from a company that wasn't really well known in the industry for bats to one of the top performing co companies in the industry. A bunch of the top home run hitting teams, including the Texas Longhorns who won the national championship in softball this year, were all using the nano alloy bats. And with that, it has some interesting characteristics. And that's where we saw those benefits when we applied them to the golf world. Okay, so how do we take nano alloy from hitting home runs yeah. <laughs> to hitting bombs on the fairway? And, sure. and, and ultimately, what does it do? We talked about the relationship between the face and the golf ball. Yep. How do, how do we make this work? So the easiest way I like to explain it is, is when ball hits driver, ball compresses, driver compresses a little bit less just because it's naturally rigid and the ball is softer. The compression of the ball is gonna determine how much it compresses. But anytime you get compression, you get energy loss. Anytime anything happens that introduces friction into the equation, you get energy loss. So what nano alloy does is by introducing it in between the titanium behind it and the ball, whether it be a urethane, ionomer, doesn't matter. What it does is it steals some of the compression from the ball. What that means is you, the, any ball you're playing, whether you're playing a fast compression, a slow, high compression, low compression, will compress less at impact. And that compression is distributed over this nano alloy face. That all means your ball's gonna go faster, it's gonna take off quicker, and there's gonna be less energy loss in that ball. Which is incredible. I think we talk about, every, everyone wants more speed right. nowadays, right? How do, you, how do you manufacture it? How do you stay within the regulations? It's gotta be conforming. With this, you showed us a graph that I thought was pretty interesting of across the face, when we talk about energy loss, yep. re, di, redistributing right. deformation and, and how the face interacts with the ball, you showed us that this nano alloy actually distributes the energy and distributes that, that deformation differently. Correct, yeah, in a typical ball impact, you'll get the ball deforming and then the club deforming essentially around that ball. You'll get a little bit of crown deformation just based off the geometry of a club. But with nano alloy, when you impact it, this entire sheet is beginning to deform. So we're taking that deformation and essentially that deformation has to come from somewhere. Like that energy came from somewhere and where it came from is from your ball. And when your ball doesn't deform as much, when your ball doesn't compress, you get less energy lost there. And basically the, what this nano alloy sheet is doing is making your ball go faster. Yeah. What I think is important for the average golfer too, because we don't hit it in the middle of the face right. every time. Right, that's important too when we talk about MOI and misses off of the center. We we also want consistent ball speed sure. there too, right? What are you noticing with nano alloy around the entire face? Awesome, because one of the great things about nano alloy is that not only does it take that compression from the ball, but it's also taking some from the head itself as well. Meaning we were able to go thinner behind it on the titanium behind this nano alloy also. When you save mass from the face, you can redistribute it in areas that are much more beneficial for the golfer in terms of MOI. What that means 
means you're gonna get a more uh, consistent ball speed across the face from a larger core area. So not only in our measurements are we the fastest in the middle, but as you go away from the center, when MOI starts to play a role in it, we're faster on those end ends as well. So again, best of both worlds when it comes to generating speed and MOI as your free friend, that's fantastic. Yeah. We, we were talking a little bit about past drivers where innovation is so key around here, but people maybe don't think <laughs> innovation with the driver in Mizuno. Although we were talking off camera that there were so many firsts sure. from Mizuno, the first titanium driver, mm -hmm. there was adjustable weights, right. a lot of firsts here. When you were creating, when Mizuno was creating this, what was the ultimate goal from a standpoint of what do we want the consumer to know? Yep. What do we want them to feel about yep. Mizuno and driver? So I think Mizuno has kind of pigeonholed ourselves to where a lot of people think of us as irons and forgings and stuff. But to your point, there's tons of innovation we've done through the years. With Nano Alloy, we wanted to make something truly vis visible and truly measurable when you go into those bays. When, when people hit this ball, when the average golfer hits this ball, it, it's one thing to tell them they're gonna get more speed, mm -hmm. but to actually go out and test it and see the numbers, see the results, that, that's ultimately what everybody wants. However, there's competition out there. When this is sitting on the shelf, yep. I think what's important too is the look, right? Absolutely. And, and how this thing looks, the the I, I, everything from the hint of blue, yeah. black, the crown on the crown, and then even the face, if there's blue on the face, how, sure. much, how much went into the design to make sure that this stands out among the rest? A ton, and you know, again, to, to talk a little about Mizuno baggage, people don't typically come in and say, man, I can't wait for that new Mizuno driver. You don't see everybody playing it on Sunday on the PGA Tour event, because we tend to use our dollars a little bit different than other people. You know, we tend to put those into the product. We put it, rather than into the hands of a tour player, we'd rather put it right into the product in terms of putting a little bit more into the head cost as well as no upcharge options as well. So when you get into the fitting bay, you can try different shafts, different grips, either your one or your one select, and the cost is what the cost is. We're not trying to put a ton of upcharges in there. That's huge too, because when you talk about getting into the right clubs, it, at Carl's Golfland, we, we don't want people taking clubs off the shelf. Right. We want to get fitted. Absolutely. Because you never know, right? There are so many different aspects to this, whether it's grip, lie, loft, shaft, that someone is able to get fitted to the right club at Mizuno and then they don't have to pay the extra $300 right. for that option. It's a big deal. Absolutely. You know, we always joke internally that just because we picked this as the stock shaft doesn't mean it works for you. Yeah. And ultimately, when we're talking about technologies that we're trying to squeak every mile per hour out of it, having the right parts are going to help you benefit from that technology the most. So not penalizing a customer for having a unique swing. Why would you? That's not fair to them. So we try to build all of that into the cost of our product rather than spending it elsewhere in terms of marketing and advertising. And then when we actually talk about the driver, we've got two different models here. Yep. We've got, I've got the JP, JPX1 and you have the JPX1 Select. Right. Let, let's walk through some of the differences here. Let's start with the Select. Sure. Who's that for and what, what can we see out of this? So both 460, a technology package is shared between these, but the one Select is designed a little bit more for that lower spin, better player design. So it's a little bit deeper face. Uh, that's gonna bring that center of gravity more forward, a little bit shorter from toe to heel, a little bit shorter from front to back. It's designed to more have that slight fade bias and not really as much left in play. The JPX1 on the other hand, that's the catch-all. That's designed for just straight line forgiveness. Yeah. When you talk about feedback and testing, what has the feedback been and the testing looked like with, with these drivers especially? Because it's it's gotta be exciting when you, you've worked on this for not just a year, <laughs> right. right? It's been a number of years that this has gone into the making. Totally. When you finally get the right product and, and you can see the results, what, what results have you seen and, and what does that feel like? It's been fun. We've gone from a company who's always struggling to keep up with ball speed to we haven't lost a ball speed battle with this in a while. So it's really exciting to see the final package come together. On top of that, it's so clean, it's so classic. It looks the part of a Mizuno. Like there's things to grab your attention, but at the same time, there's things that are super clean about it. So the ultimate product in the JPX-1 was worthy of that new name. The JPX-1, is some, it stands alone. It's a new product, something totally different. And hopefully it's something that everyone gives a try at least. More than anything, try it. People I don't think have hit Mizuno drivers enough. Put us in the mix the numbers work out for you, that's our job for as engineers to make that happen. Yeah, well, Nano Alloy was hitting bombs on the baseball field, now hitting bombs on the fairways too. <laughs>